Hi there, it's Bob here from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday time again. And today we've got a really good technique for you. I'm going to show you how you can take any spline in Cinema 4D. We can make that spline dynamic and we can move it around with a smoke and fire sim. It is spline advection. So let's jump into Cinema 4D and we'll start the clock. Here we are on our scene then, and we've got a text spline, we've got an explosion effects object, and an XP emitter. Let's have a look at the particles first. So this is our particle sim. This is going to be the source of our explosion. To get this set up in the emitter emission tab, we've got it set to shot. We have got 45 particles being emitted every frame for a duration of 30 frames. They've got a lifespan of 30 frames with 10 frames variation and we've got a speed of 150 centimetres with 50 centimetres variation and a radius of 5 with 3 centimetres variation. And that is giving us this particle sim. So for this to become the source of our explosion, first we need to give the particles some temperature and some fuel. To do that, we go to the extended data tab and in the temperature, let's give them 1 and in the fuel, let's give them 1. Now we need to get the particle emitter to talk to exposure effects. We do that with a tag. Let's go to tags and we'll go to extensions, insidium, and we want an exposure effects source. Let's leave everything in default. Now, if we hit play, you're going to see that, yes, look, we're getting a smoke and fire sim. But as the smoke and fire is generated, it just kind of goes straight up with the buoyancy. And actually, we want them to follow along that initial kind of direction and speed of the particle. So to encourage that, all we need to do is go to our emitter source tag and we could just increase the velocity. It's set to 100%. Let's put it on maybe 500. And now you're going to see that the smoke and fluid has inherited more velocity yet yeah, it's pushing it really far forwards. That's looking very nice. Excellent. So now we've got that, let's make that emitter invisible and... Um, we're going to use this smoke and fire sim to advect, to move around this spline. And the way we're going to do that is with XP Dynamics. So let's go to the text spline, the object that we want to move, and we can go to Tags, Extensions, Insidium, and we want an XP Dynamics. There it is. Now, if I just go forward one frame, you'll see that the Dynamics tab births a particle on every intermediate point of our um, spline and if we move these particles it will in turn move the spline so that's how it works but for exposure effects to advect these particles we actually need them to be created by an emitter their own emitter not just under the hood by the tag so the way we do that is in the tag settings look we can just add an emitter instead so let's click that which adds the emitter, we'll bring that down. Let's just call that one emitter dynamic. And now if we hit play, it looks exactly the same, but it is this particle emitter that is creating these particles. Now we want our smoke and fire sim to push around and move these particles. How do we do that? Well, we need to um, switch on advection. So let's go to our Exposure Effects object, to the Advection tab, and look, we can just click on Advec Particles. Now, there's going to be a problem here. If we hit Play, it's going to kind of work, but it's going to mess up a bit. Look, we're getting some kind of weird jittering, and it's not really working. And we've lost the explosion look. And that's because we have activated Advection, but this is affecting our source particles as well, the ones that are creating the explosion. And so they're kind of being advected by their own explosion and just going mad. So we need to switch that off. So the way we do that is, look, let's just go to our emitter, the source one, go to modifiers, drag in the explosion effects, and now it won't be affected by that advection. So now if we hit play, yep, look, we've got our smoke and fire sim back and it's moving around our spline but it's moving it around as one big kind of solid spline mass. Let's just make those dynamic particles invisible so we can see the spline. We want it to kind of break apart and wobble around the place. So let's go to the dynamic settings. And all we need to do is there's a couple of things. First of all, if we take away all of this rigidity, now you're going to see that those 
particles are able to move around. Yes, we're kind of getting the look we want, but it's breaking it, isn't it? Look, and it's, it's, it's losing its shape completely. So we need no rigidity, but we need it to hold its shape. And we can do that by adding a springy constraint. And we do that in our dynamics tag. Look, we have a constraints tab. Let's click on that. And we can add a structure constraint. Now, let's just leave it in default and hit play. So now, yeah, we're kind of getting that look that we want. But we probably don't need this much strength to that constraint. So let's just reduce it down a bit. Let's make our exposure effects invisible because we don't need to look at that smoke and fire sim anymore. And now we have got this really nice spline advection. Look at that. Moved around by our exposure effects sim. Completely dynamic. And this remains procedural. So if we go back and change our text spline to something else like Bob. Um, let's have a look. And now we've got that spline moving around very cool indeed so this can be done um, it is absolutely procedural and there's one more thing I can show you let's just put it back to spline what we're able to do is animate and keyframe some of these spline settings so if we hit play and now we've kind of lost the shape completely but then if we just add a bit of rigidity look it starts to snap back to its original spline which is pretty cool. And if you had a, a camera following the spline along, you're going to get a pretty nice look. So that's how we can set up really quick and easy spline advection using X particles with exposure effects.